The Mayan shamans, or spiritual leaders, used hallucinogenic plants and substances to enter an altered state from which they were able to bring back wisdom and knowledge, enabling them to interpret their heavenly observations. Izapa really was a kind of new world Eleusis. In the old world, Eleusis was a place where seekers were initiated into the sacred mysteries. And at Izapa, initiates, those seeking knowledge, were brought through a process of understanding this new galactic cosmology. And clearly, sacred plants was part of this. We know that ritual mushroom stones were found in the region around Izapa, so we know that there was a kind of mushroom cult going on there. And we also know that dimethyltryptamine is a powerful hallucinogenic that can be harvested from the glands of the bufo toad. And Stela 6 at Izapa, for example, depicts the bufo toad. And it actually shows the, the toad's glands with vision scrolls coming out of the glands. This actually indicates a, a very clear proof that they were aware of the vision producing effects of the gland secretions. So it's very clear that Azapa was an initiatory center that utilized hallucinogenic plants and substances in order to facilitate um, expansion of consciousness so that uh, larger perspectives could be embraced. The Inca, the Hopi, the Mayans were all shamanic cultures and they entered into altered states of awareness in order to access this body of wisdom which is infinite. So to do that they had to step outside of ordinary time which is the opportunity we all have today as we come to the end of time is to step into infinity, to step into this body of ancient wisdom. We can learn from ancient civilizations. And so, so I hope I've played some part in reintroducing the wisdom of the ancient world to the modern world and helping people to open their eyes and open their ears and, and hear what the ancients have to say to us. And, and more recently also the recognition that um, the shamans of tribal and hunter-gatherer societies around the world with their systems and techniques for contacting the spirit realm directly also have a great deal to teach us. So, you know, I would advocate a kind of reversal of the normal order of things. It's not we uh, in our scientific and technological world uh, where everything is rooted and grounded in a material and mechanistic view of the universe. It is not uh, we uh, who may place ourselves above the civilizations of antiquity. We may not say that we are greater than or better than the shaman in a small village in, in, in the Amazon. Those civilizations of antiquity and those tribal shamans today uh, have a huge amount to teach us and uh, we can only recover the better part of ourselves if we are willing to listen to what they have to say. So uh, I suppose that's, that's what I've tried to do. I've tried to say this that came before, uh, this knowledge of the spirit world that shamans still possess today, this is what really matters about us. Let's listen to it. Sacred plants will give you access. They'll give you access to these domains, but that's the easy way. Shamanic training is very rigorous. It demands that you, that you spend time in nature and vision quest and not just increase the serotonin levels in your brain so you can experience the divine for a fleeting moment and then come back into a life that is hell. So you have to be willing to pay your dues, to do the work, to um, spend time in nature, to spend time with yourself and not just increase the levels of dopamine or certain brain chemicals that stimulate bliss. The psychedelics have opened the doors for many people in the West, but opening the doors and walking through them are very different things.